to easy btec today we are going to learn about the concept of uh, the random variable the concept name is the random variable so this is the second unit of your syllabus so the name of the unit is random variable random variable okay so coming to the definition of random variable definition of the random variable it is a function a random variable is a function 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 which maps which maps all the elements of all the elements of sample space all the elements of sample space into a real axis to a real axis so this is the definition of a random variable so it is actually represented it is represented by a capital letter it is represented by a capital letter always represented by a capital letter by capital letter that is capital x might be capital y or capital z etc so that means your the random variable must be always representation in terms of only capital letters only so now i am moving on to the example of random variable how it is represented how in the figure man so suppose i am considering an experiment an experiment so, so you, if you want to know the sample space you should do one experiment so that experiment might be anything so what i am doing is i am rolling a die i am rolling a die and and a coin together rolling a die and a coin together so what is the sample space here i am getting here sample space here so since die has six faces coin has two outcomes so totally i will get 6 into 2 totally 12 outcomes in my experiment so that means so the sample space is equal to the sample space might be represented like this s equal to s equal to totally there are how many 12 that means t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 and similarly here h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 and h6 so this is called the sample space so to find the i mean to note the random variable first you should now find out the sample space of the given experiment so from the given experiment we can say that this is the sample space so now according to our definition according to the definition it is a function so that means it is a function function is some it is in terms of if you see in your previous classes your function is represented by like this f of x like that so here also our, our random variable is it is capital x and it is represented by in terms of your sample space so the sample space the random variable with sample space is represented by what x of s so you should take a function you should take a function this is x of s x of s suppose i am assuming x of s equal to uh, what I, uh, I will take uh, x of s equal to 1 1 so i will define here x of s equal to 1 if 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 uh, point faces point faces t minus 1 if it is it is h so that means the coin faces tail tail i will take the value as 1 if the coin take uh, i mean coin faces head i will take the value of minus 1 so now see so this is my real axis so real axis means it starts at 0 1 sorry 1 2 3 4 5 similarly minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on so this is the real axis so what the uh, uh, random variable said means it maps all the elements of sample space all the elements of sample space into real axis now see i am mapping the uh, real axis i mean sample space so here you will get say see here here you will get all the heads all the heads you see here you will get all the heads the sun 
all the heads the right side so if ever i am getting head so if it is occurring the value should be what value should be what one so the mapping is done when the head is there similarly if tail is coming what is my value what i am defining sorry okay so take here head comes one and if tail comes tail comes minus one minus one. whatever it may be you can define any number of ways so but for timing i am i am defining like this x of s equal to minus one if t faces f x of s equal to one if h faces point faces h so now here there are six uh, uh, number of outcomes which are facing h i mean that means head so that's why I am mapping this head into head possibilities into real axis, real axis through my function. So what is my function here? My function is here. This is this x of s. So you should map your sample space through random variable only. Then only it is valid. Okay. There should be a mediator that is called this one. This is a random variable. This is a random variable. Through that you should map. You should map. Now similarly, similarly, I'll say what I will do is here. I'll do. I'll map tail. So what tail says here? If tail comes, it becomes what minus one. So minus one means. So for that, whatever may be the value for all these values, so what I will get? I get minus one. So the entire figure. So this entire figure. This entire figure is called entire figure is called random variable. Random variable representation in terms of figure. So here, what you will get? You will get sample space. You will get random variable function. You will get, you will get what? The real axis. The real axis. And one more thing. This is not one. You can assume this is just x axis. This is just x axis. Okay. And my function comes like this. And I am doing x axis on the outside of your function. Outside of the random variable. So this is one example how to represent a random variable. Now see. There are different types of random variables. There are different types of random variables. So there are the those are those are see here. see here. Types of random variables. Types. Types of types of random variables. So the first one is the first one is continuous random variable. Continuous random variable. Second one is second one is discrete random variable. Discrete random variable. The third one is third one is Mixed random variable, mixed random variable. So there are three types of random variables: continuous, discrete, and mixed random variable. So as the name comes, continuous, discrete, mixed. So continuous means they should be, they should be. See if you move upwards, if you move upwards. So here, if you see this one, if you see this one here, in the real axis you are having only two points, only two points. If you see minus one and plus one. So in this case, this random variable is called discrete random variable. Why? Because here only discrete values, one and minus one is there only. There is no other values. So one and minus one is there. That's why it is called discrete random variable. So if it if it should if it is called if if I want to call this one as continuous random variable, continuous random variable, that means we should have your arrow mark should indicates everything, everything from zero to one, everything from zero to one. But here you are mapping to only one. Here it is mapping to only minus one. So the mapping onto the real axis completely depends on your function and also on sample space. So based on the sample space and based on the given function, random variable function, you can determine whether the given random variable is continuous or discrete. Continuous or discrete. Now continuous random variable. How it is defined? How it is uh, looks like? You can see here continuous random variable. So for continuous random variable, there should be one sample space, there should be one function x of s, and there should be one real axis x. So for every random variable, there should be like that. But what is the change you, you have to see here is for continuous random variable. So if it is a discrete sample space, sample discrete means you will get one, two, three, something like that discrete. And if you define your x of s equal to x of s equal to s like that, s like that. 
that means on the rail axis you will get you will get what s means you have s means 1 2 3 on rail axis from sample space you will get 1 you will get you will get 2 on a, another one it is 3 1 2 3 so what is the whatever value is showing in the sample space that should reflect in your I mean real axis, but this is called discrete sample space. So discrete random variable. Why? Because here the values are discrete on the real axis. So you should consider the first real axis itself. So the values of real axis must be continuous. So for that purpose, for that purpose, so you should define sample space in a continuous manner. So I will like I will see like this. So I will take the sample space of our our, our continuous random variable is like a clock a clock or a circle a circle having values from 1 to 1 to suppose from here one like this so 1 to 12 and my needle is slowly moves like this slowly moves like this suppose here it is 2 here it is 3 here it is 4 5 6 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So now see what happened here is what, what will happen here is you, this needle is slowly moves, slowly moves, but does not move directly from 1 to 2. That means if it is moves slowly, there is a chance of getting over one infinity values between 1 to 2. Why? Because this needle is not discrete, this is continuously slowly moving like this, slowly moving like this. That means the here what will happen is the sample space if you define the sample space here it might be your sample space might be in the range of 1 less than or equal to s less than or equal to 12 that means that means the needle might stop in between 1 and 12 on anywhere anywhere from 1 to 12 on anywhere it might stop it might stop so that you should understand that we should understand so the sample space here is 1 to 12 1 to 12 okay so if now if i if i say that if i say that x x of s equal to s so i am assuming my x of s equal to s now see x of s have infinite infinite values s have infinite values now what i will do what i have to do i have to map i have to map all the values of s all the values of s into rail axis so that means your shape it will be coming like this it will be coming like this and it will comes every point every point in your sample space every point in your rail axis so and it is showing that it is extends until infinity until infinity that means every point on your sample space here it is mapped here it is mapped so and we can say that the values are continuous why because here you will get at 0 1 0 you will get at 0 0.1 you will get at 0 0.2 everywhere everywhere between 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 why because i am i am defining my random variable like this x of s equal to yes x of s equal to s so there are number of possibilities for needle for needle number of possibilities this needle or uh, this uh, pendulum like that any any can any way you can call so this needle stop so it, it can be stopped from 1 to 2 on anywhere that means it is having infinite values and everywhere it can stop that means the total number of possibilities of outcome sample space is equal to infinite. So that's why I am assuming my s equal to like this sample space is equal to 1 less than or equal to s less than or equal to 12. So in this range it will having. Now I am defining my x of s is like this x of s equal to x of s equal to s like same as sample space. So if you see here if you see here so the sample space is continuous. So in the same way we are defining x of s equal to s. To map the all the elements of sample space into rail axis, rail axis, I need I need zero to infinity points, zero to infinity points, infinity points. So in that way, I can say that this is a continuous random variable. So the condition for here is continuous random variable is the sample space must be continuous. First condition must be must and should be sample space must be continuous. That you should remember. Sample space must be always continuous for a continuous random variable so the second one is now the second one is discrete random variable the second one is second one is discrete random variable so we have we have already 
seen the example of discrete random variable already so i am again, again going to explain so this is the example of discrete random variable this is the example exact example of discrete random variable why it is the random variable name always depends on the number of points on your real axis that you should remember if number of points on the real axis is infinite then it is called continuous random variable the number of points are finite then it is called discrete random variable now see here already we have defined sample space so it is having total number of 12 or uh, some 12 outcomes and i am defining x of s equal to minus 1 if coin face is tail and if it is 1 if coin face is head Head. So, for all the values of tile, I'll get minus 1. For all the values of h, I'll get plus 1. So, here I am having only two values on my real axis. So, I can say that this is a discrete random variable. So, that is the example of discrete random variable. Now, moving on to the third one. Third one. The third one is mixed random variable. Mixed random variable. As the name indicates mixed, as the name indicates mixed, your real axis, our real axis must must have continuous as well as discrete values. Continuous as well as discrete values. Now see, in the same way, I am taking my sample space is from the needle, and my x of s is like this. Okay, so I am defining. So here we already defined it is one, two, three like that. So I am defining my x of s equal to sorry. First define s. So s is from 1 less than or equal to s less than or equal to 1. So sample space this needle starts on any way from 1 to 12. This is the meaning of this one. And I will define x of s like this. x of s equal like this. x of s equal to 1 for, for if 1 for if it is showing 1 less than or equal to 1 less than or equal to s less than or equal to 6 that means if your sample space in between 1 to 6 you can say the value is directly 1 and if we, I am saying it is yes yes if s per per 6 less than s less than or equal to 12 s less than or equal to 7 so from this if you define the random variable I mean random variable like this from the sample space if you draw the mixed random variable it is like this so whatever the value from 1 to 6 from 1 to 6 from 1 to 6 that for that i i have what the value is the value is 1 the value is 1 so you can get values from 1 to 6 from here so if the needle is in is here is in this range is from here to here the needle is from here to here i can say in that case in that case the random variable the sample space maps to point 1 maps to point 1 so and the and the point should be always comes through random variable only it does not come out so this is the first case Similarly, I can say x of s equal to s for 6 less than or equal to s less than or equal to 12. That means, that means if your needle, if your needle in this space, that means, that means 6, here it is 12. So, in this space, in this space, what I will do, I will do, I want value of s. That means if it is at 6, if it is a 6.1, it is 6.1, it is 6.1. Suppose I am writing this one as 6. 6.1 if it is a 6.2 6.2 6.3 6.3 that means here you will get number of values on the from 6 to 12 number of values from 6 to 12 okay so this is my small x so here if you see from 6 to 12 from 6 to 12 it is in the continuous form it is in the continuous form why because number of values will be coming and whereas from 1 to 6 you are having only one value only one value so if you see it this one value is called discrete value and from 6 to 12 these are called in continuous values so if the real axis contains continuous as well as discrete values discrete values in that case in that case 
the random variable is called mixed random variable mixed random variable i am telling you again if the uh, real axis contains if the real axis contains so one more thing and you are mapping always starts goes through your random variable only random variable only should not come outside now see so it comes all all through function and here it is having continuous values and it is one discrete value so the real axis has both continuous and discrete values so that's why the random variable name comes is comes the name here comes the name as mixed random variable so this is what about random variable concept so this random variable concept is very important for your exams so they gave you a question like that explain about random variable concept so in that case you should write definition of the random variable and and you should explain each type of random variable three types of random variables with example so that is what about random variable concept now the next one is now the next one is so it, is, it might be small small question conditions conditions for a function to be a random variable condition for a function to be a random variable okay so there are two conditions there are two condition so these are so the set the set the set x less than or equal to x is must be must be an event an event in the sample space in the sample space Sample space. So these are the first condition, and the second condition is the probability is the probability is at x equal to minus infinity, and the probability at x equal to infinity x equal to infinity must be must be zero must be zero for a random function to be a random variable. So these are the conditions. Two conditions should satisfy a function for a function. To be a random variable, this might be given for two mass question. So see this one. So the, the set, the set x less than or equal to x is must be an event in the sample space, and p and the probability of x equal to infinity and x equal to minus infinity must be always equal to zero. These are the two conditions for a function to be random variable. So now the next concept is now the next concept is probability probability distribution function distribution function probability distribution function it is sometimes it is called letters capital letters pdf or sometimes it can be represented like this capital fx subscript c how it is represented capital f subscript capital x of small x so this representative representation is very important see here representative so the definition of probability distribution is like this the probability of an event the probability probability of an event of an event so for every event there should be one a one probability so that is the probability of an event the probability of an event the t event is x less than or equal to x x less than or equal to x is called is called is called p d f so that means probability distribution function so the definition is like this the probability of an event x less than or equal to x is called probability distribution function and it is represented by it is it is by what is represented by represented by f cap f subscript cap x of surface so now mathematically mathematically the probability distribution can be represented like this can be drawn i mean can be write like this f x of x is equal to so probability distribution function is equal to probability of an event what f less than or equal to x. f less than or equal to so this is the very important definition near probability 
So you should remember this uh, definition compulsorily. So you can ask this. Uh, if there, there may be chance to ask the, to give this uh, definition for the small, very small questions. Okay. So this is the definition. Now moving on to the moving on to the properties. Moving on to the properties of probability distribution function. Moving on to the properties of probability distribution function. So the first property is the first property is so f x of minus infinity sorry plus infinity I write plus infinity f x of minus infinity is always equal to zero. The first property of our probability distribution function is f x of minus infinity is equal to zero. And the second property is f x of infinity is equal to zero fx of infinity is equal to 0. So I am I will explain later these properties with examples. So uh, first uh, uh, see this one fx of minus infinity is equal to 0 and fx of infinity sorry not equal to 0 is equal to 1 and the third one and the third one is p of p of x1 less than x less than x2 is equal to is equal to fx of x2 minus fx of x1 fx of x2 minus fx of x1 this is the third property so if the random variable is in between two values two numbers you can call between two numbers then in that case the random variable the probability is fx of x2 upper upper number minus lower number that means fx of x2 minus fx of x1 so fourth one fourth one fx of x1 less than fx of x2 x2 if if x1 less than x2 if x1 less than x2 what you will get fx of x1 is always less than or equal to fx of x2 and now the fifth one is random variable it is always lies between 0 and 1 why because you see because you can all you can already say that this is a probability so uh, probability distribution is nothing but probability so that means your probability is always must and should lies between what 0 and 1 0 and 1 so this is the fifth property and the last property is sixth one sixth one so fx of fx of x plus is equal to fx of fx of x plus is equal to fx of x that means the distribution function is a right continuous function right continuous function this is a sixth property now see i'm we will see one more time the properties so fx of minus infinity is equal to zero so minus infinity that means leftmost point on your real axis has a probability of zero similarly fx of infinity is equal to one that means rightmost point has the probability of one Similarly, third one, p of x1 less than x less than x2 equal to fx of x2 minus fx of x1. So that means in the range, in some range, if you want to find the probability, you can say that is the difference. That is the difference. And if fx of x1 less than fx of x2, if and only if what the denominator you know, mean, inside function, inside numbers must be less than, I mean, there must be having uh, relation x1 less than x2. And and if the fifth one is so the random uh, here probability distribution function is a probability right so that's why it is always right uh, lies between zero and one and the sixth one is the probability distribution function is a right continuous function right continuous function so these are the probabilities of these are the basic introduction about the probability distribution function how it is represented how it is represented and and the properties, their properties, their six properties, their six properties. So we have seen continuous. This is continuous random, continuous probability distribution function. So in it is also there are there is discrete in that for the it is for the continuous random variable. So for discrete random variable also there is a probability distribution function. There is a probability distribution function. So for a discrete random variable, the probability distribution function is also represented by like this but with summation it is sigma i equal to 1 to n 
P of x equal to x i into u of x minus x i u of x minus x i. So this is the probability distribution for a discrete random pair. So you see here we see for a continuous random pair we will get integrals, whereas for a discrete one the operations are completely on summations. Summations. So for that purpose here it is as the name indicates discrete f x of x is equal to sigma e equal to one to n p of x equal to x i u of x minus x y. So what is meant by u here? Where where u is what? U means u of x x minus x i. U means what? So u means it is a step function. Step function. Okay, and the definition of step function we already know u of x equal to one for x greater than or equal to zero, zero elsewhere, zero elsewhere. So this is the definition of discrete random variable probability distribution function. So this problem, this concept is also very important. Explain probability distribution function like that. They will give you formula. I mean problem. I mean they will give you question. In that case, you will write definition. In that case, you will write definition. You will get. You have to write properties. You have to write properties, and then you have to write the probability distribution for discrete random variable also. Discrete random variable also. So the discrete random variable f x of x equal to sigma e equal to one to n p of x equal to x i into u of x minus x i, where u is the step function, and it is defined like this. And it is defined like this.